Okay, so the same ramp and pulley setup as the last question. And so in the last question, we determined that if the large mass, the big box in the ramp is 9.1 times bigger than the little mass, then this system would just begin to accelerate to the right with the large mass going down the ramp. And so we were able to determine that 9.1. And so looking at this one where it's 10 times bigger, uh, that tells us that it's clearly accelerating to the right with the large mass going down that ramp. And so in this question, we're asked, what is the acceleration? And so um, to not waste your time, I thought, well, let's just jump right into this. I won't go through all the masses and the setup. Uh, you can always look at the initial part of that previous video if any confusion, but at this point, presumably you have that one figured out. And so just some details going from there. So let's start off X direction. Um, the equations are very similar to that previous one, F net equals MA. Um, and so let's start laying those out. So we have FG big MX going to the right, our frictional force to the left, and the force of gravity of the little guy going to the left as well. And the full system on the right, so we have both masses involved and the acceleration. All right, so let's start filling those in. Um, we, for our FG, we can say big M G. Um, and so sine 30 and then minus, uh, and in this case we have mu and we'll replace that, or we'll, let's go through the two-step approach here. And then uh, minus mg, and we have our m plus ma on the right-hand side. So breaking it down a little further, um, in this case, um, we are going to want to swap out that big M um, with a 10 little Ms, right? In other words, we're, we're, we don't have the masses, so in the end, we're going to want to cancel out the masses. So um, if we make them all in terms of little mass, then that will make that possible at some point. So let's kind of take that approach, 10 mg sine 30 minus mu. And again, uh, Fn replaced with the uh, Fg capital MY. And so we'll work that through and um, 10 M, so capital M replaced there. And then we have G cos 30. And then we have the minus MG, and we're running a little out of room here. And we'll replace that capital M with a 10 little M's. And so 10 little M's with one little M is, um, actually, I guess we can fit that in, 11 MA. All right. So um, looking at that, uh, this seems like a good time to cancel out some M's. So we have all those M's, M in every term. So that simplifies that a little bit. Um, so that leaves us with 10 G sine 30 minus mu 10 uh, G cos 30 and minus G, I'll fit that in there, equals 11 A. Okay, so um, at this point, we're pretty much ready to plug into our calculator. We could say uh, this is 10 G sine 30 minus, and our mu, our mu was 0 0.35, 0 0.35 times 10 times G cos 30 um, minus G, and that's all over 11. So quite a bit to stick in the calculator there, but we can do such. And what we come out with is 0 0.86 meters per second squared. All right, so, um, so there we go. 
Um, I think there's a couple, that, 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 so that's a final answer. A couple things to note in this question is that now that we have the acceleration, we could come up with the tension in that rope because now what we can do is we can go and break that rope and replace this um, and we could convert this into two, instead of one big system uh, free body diagram, two individual free body diagrams. And so this is probably the simpler one and you could go uh, back there and, and say that um, that free body diagram along with the acceleration and we could figure out our tension there as well. Um, another thing that I think is worth pointing out is um, in this case, we knew that we could use the kinetic coefficient of friction because they said clearly that it's once moving. Now, in questions, they could be, they could, you know, kind of let you know that you're beyond the static. So we know that this static coefficient of friction is used if, if everything is sitting still or if it's just on the verge of moving, like in our previous question. So indicating that you can use the kinetic coefficient of friction can be done in a few ways. You could, they could say once moving or they could say uh, two seconds after it's released, then you know that it's clearly moving at that point. Or they could say, uh, you know, it's moved five centimeters or 10 centimeters or whatever. Just anything to indicate that you're clearly moved from the static coefficient of friction to the kinetic coefficient of friction. So, so those are a few things to keep in mind when you're working on a problem like this. But otherwise, um, just being as organized as you can is, is pretty key here. So all done.